Hey guys, in this video we'll be looking at food additives, we'll be looking at the types and uses of different food additives as well as some health effects. So let's stay tuned. We are very fortunate to be living in a time where we can walk into a supermarket or grocery store and have such a large variety of things to buy. But all this is only possible because certain things are added to the food that is stored on the shelves. So let's look at what they are. There are several different types of food additives. Some of the more common ones are preservatives, dyes, stabilizers, flavoring agents, thickeners and antioxidants. There are, there are more as well but these are the main ones. General uses of the food additives are one to prevent food spoilage by microorganisms. This is the most common reason. We don't want the food to get spoiled, we want it to last. Food spoilage is also by oxidation, not only by microorganisms. We'll get into that later. We want to improve how the food looks. Unfortunately, consumer choice is most often based on how something looks. This is not just limited to food, of course. In everything that we buy, if it is more attractive, then there's a higher tendency that we will actually purchase that item. Improve the smell and taste of food. Of course, we want food that tastes and smells good and to improve the texture of food. Let's look at preservatives. The function of preservatives is to slow or prevent the growth of microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi. Bacteria and fungi are responsible for causing food spoilage because they break down the food and as long as we can stunt the growth or we can kill the microorganism that is present in the food, then we can prevent food spoilage. Some natural preservatives are such as salt, sugar and vinegar. These are used in many types of food processing such as pickling, we use vinegar and pickling and high salt and sugar content will also prevent growth of microorganisms. There are many synthetic preservatives. Here we have sodium nitrate and sodium nitrite commonly used in sausages and meat. They keep the meat looking fresh as well. They are used in dried fish, canned fruit and fruit juices. We have benzoic acid or sodium benzoate. These are commonly used in sauces such as chili sauce, ketchup, oyster sauce, soy sauce, jams and margarines. Then we have sulfur dioxide and sodium sulfide. These are another type of preservatives. They are used in soft drinks, dry fruit and vegetables as well as jams. So without these preservatives, the food will not last very long on the shelf and this will affect food production because if food cannot last long on the shelf then we cannot mass produce food and this will affect a lot of things because if the food is not bought then the food will go to waste because it cannot last nobody buys the food nobody consumes the food this will produce a large amount of waste as well Antioxidants, as the name suggests, is to prevent oxidation of food. And oxidation normally happens in fatty food because fatty food contains fats and oils. And these fats and oils, when left exposed to oxygen in the air, will be oxidized. This will produce a rancid smell. This is when we say food has gone rancid. It is unpleasant. We don't want this to happen. So some of the common antioxidants used are vitamin C. Ascorbic acid is vitamin C. Tocopherols, vitamin E and butyl hydroxyanisole BHA. These are used again to prevent oxidation of fats and oils in fatty food such as biscuits, cakes, margarine and oils. Thickeners and stabilizing agents are sometimes grouped together, sometimes they are grouped separately. The function of thickeners or thickening agents is to thicken liquids or to make them into a semi-solid form. You can see the examples where they are used, jams, jellies, custard and sauces. So all these have a thick consistency or semi-solid consistency. And the thickening agents are such as gelatin, pectin, agar agar, sodium alginate and cornstarch. These are some of the thickening agents. Stabilizers are used to prevent separation of liquids and oils in emulsions. So if you look at these foods here, peanut butter, ice cream, salad dressing, these are examples of emulsions. Emulsions are a mixture of oil and water. They are forced to mix using certain uh, processes and with the help of stabilizers. But they don't like to mix. So if you don't use stabilizers, eventually we will say what we say is that the emulsion will break. 
when the emulsion breaks actually the the water and the oil layer will separate separate into two layers so in order to prevent this stabilizers are used and you can see there this similar substance to the thickness some are exactly the same substance gelatin pectin acacia gum lecithin these are stabilizers <music> Dyes and colouring agents are of course used to improve the looks of food. The red of the food is brighter, the green is brighter, it looks fresher and more attractive. So there are many dyes that are used in the industry. Some natural dyes are such as the screw pine juice, also known as pandan in Malaysia and Indonesia. And then the pandan colour is green. This is commonly used in cakes and some kueh. Carotene from carrots are a reddish orange colour and it's used in margarine to give it that yellow shade. Bet betanin from beetroot is a red color natural dye. So we have some natural dyes. We have many synthetic dyes, artificial dyes. Tartrazine is very popular, it's a yellow color. And we have sunset yellow. Sunset yellow is a darker yellow, orangish color. And then we have carmoisin, which is a red color dye. And these are commonly used in cordials, candy, desserts, dried fruits. <laughs> Flavor enhancers, as the name suggests, is to enhance the flavor of food. There are several types of flavor enhancers, but I think this is the most common flavor enhancer. Monosodium glutamate, also known as MSG. MSG is very popular. It is a type of flavor enhancer. Then we have some sweeteners as well. We have natural sweeteners, such as honey or palm sugar. These are available naturally. But we also have artificial sweeteners, such as aspartame and saccharin. Saccharin has been banned in some countries because of their possible health effects we'll talk about it later aspartame is also commonly used as an artificial sweetener artificial flavoring so artificial flavoring is flavoring to mimic natural flavoring normally the flavor of fruits and these are commonly esters esters have a characteristic fruity smell they mimic the smell of fruits so if, for example isoamyl acetate is used to produce flavoring that smells like banana or orange benzyl ethanoate strawberry Octyl ethanoate orange, ethyl butanoate pineapple, these are all esters. And these are the smells of the fruit that they mimic. So these are artificial and these are commonly used in making drinks and desserts, fruity drinks and desserts that don't contain the actual flavor of the fruit itself. Before we discuss the effect of food additives on health, this is just an overview for educational purposes. If you're really interested in looking at the specific effect on a specific group of people, then please look at randomized control trials that have double-blind study if possible. And please look at published studies that have been properly appraised in order to get information regarding this. But this is just a general overview. There is a chance that food additives can cause these diseases or these health problems. First is an allergic reaction. Uh, the symptoms and signs that are present will be itchiness, runny nose, sometimes we have chest tightness, rash and swelling. And this can be very severe. It can lead to anaphylaxis and it can lead to death. But again, when we look at health effects, we must understand that this is not necessarily going to happen. This is, there is just a small chance that this can happen. So the agents that can cause this are BHA, MSG and sodium sulfide. And then we have tartrazine. Tartrazine has a possibility of causing hyperactivity. Sodium nitrite has a possibility of causing brain damage. Sodium nitrite and sodium nitrate can cause blue baby syndrome. Blue baby syndrome is when there is a lack of oxygen in the blood. When there is a lack of oxygen in the blood, deoxygenated blood is blue in color. And so the baby will appear blue and this is a potentially fatal condition. Now many food additives are also associated with cancer. They have a possibility of causing cancer. Again, these are things that can happen. They will not necessarily happen. If these things definitely happen, then of course these food additives will be banned. They will not be used. But they are still used. Of course, they are governed by laws. The certain different laws in different countries allow different amounts of food additives that can be present in the food because of the possibility of causing these health effects. 
so they will not definitely happen to you if you consume food with these food additives but there is a chance that it can happen everybody's body responds differently to food to anything that we eat so there is a chance that it can happen in certain people but the probability of happening is low that is why it is still permitted however this is a sign that we should be cautious and that we should not take too much food that contains food additives so that we can lower the chances of us ever contracting any such health problems food additives are also very important because without food additives food will not be able to last very long and this will create a big problem in food production and food supply all over the world that's it for this video guys i hope you've learned something if you have please do hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe i will post at least one video a week i'll see you in the next video